doesn't look good. I love planes. G'day, I'm Brad and this is Hayley. We travel around Australia full time in our Land Cruiser and Kedron Caravan. In today's episode, we tick off a major bucket list item, the biggest sand island in the world, Fraser Island, or Gari as it's traditionally known. So grab a brew, kick back, and come and see some of its unique features and history through our eyes for the first time. We kick things off at the southernmost tip of the island. We catch the Manta Ray Barge from Inskip Point and make quite easy work of the soft sand at the spit. The area just recently had some real heavy downpours. There's been so much water, like up to 150 mils has fallen in this area in the last 48 hours. So um, thank goodness it's not mud over there and it's sand, so it drains pretty quickly and um, lets us get out there and have a bit of fun. The barge here is $130 return, the alternative being a barge from Riverheads, though this one will cost you $230 and it'll land you on the western side of the island. Incredible. I feel like I'm having heart palpitations. I'm that overwhelmed and excited to be on Fraser Island. We've just come to our first water crossing and you can see how much it's rained in the last 48 hours here with the amount of fresh water. This is fresh water right here. You can just see the amount of water that's moving through the um, off the beach here out of the island. Um, it's crazy, but it's all fresh so we like fresh water. Right, so this is um, the township of Euro. We're just cutting in here. I'm gonna go have a look around here. What the hell is this? Electricity grid. Oh. Okay, a bit hesitant, sorry. There's like electrical wires and then a cattle grid. So I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, we're just cutting in through here um, through the village and going out to Lake Mackenzie. We later found out that the electric grid is to keep dingoes out of the main towns on the island because when dingoes get used to people, their confidence grows and that's when they can become dangerous. Gari is quite unique, being made up of sand that has accumulated over 750,000 years. A dense subtropical rainforest has formed as naturally occurring fungi in the sand decomposes and releases vital nutrients that are absorbed by the plants. We were blown away by the beauty of these inland tracks. Made it through the island to Lake Mackenzie. As you can see behind me, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a pretty popular spot today, as you, like you can see, there's quite a lot of people down here, but that's to be expected. It is the mid afternoon, and um, it was funny though, hey, because when we were driving, we seemed to be passing nobody, and I was actually thinking, wow, maybe we've we're, you know, it's a Monday, so that would make Maybe sense. There's no, no one's one here. here, and then we drive into Lake Mackenzie. It's like complete opposite. Car <laughs> so parks busy. just chock a block.
my god. A little frog just fell out of the tree and landed on the bonnet. Aww. Oh, we've got an emergency, guys. We've got an emergency. And I've got a Land Cruiser handbrake that doesn't stop my car. Oh, look at him. He just dropped out of the sky and landed on the bonnet. I feel like Brody Moss right here. Except for the cute little creatures. There we go. Oh, oh he's gone. <laughs> he didn't even want to know me. We made our way along the Central Lake scenic drive back out to the eastern side of the island. The inland trucks have a speed limit of 30 kilometers an hour, but if you are budgeting time for your own visit, we seem to average 10 to 20 kilometers an hour, which is pretty slow going. We trucked north along the beach, taking the bypass trucks for Poyungan and Yidney Rocks to find a suitable campsite for the night that was protected from the forecast wind and rain. Look at those clouds. That doesn't look good. <laughs> well, <laughs> we might set up just in time. Eh? Yeah, we made it to our campsite and um, it's a cracker. We're at the Wahoba campgrounds, <laughs> zone five, right near the Mahino shipwreck. But um, have a go at it down here. Yeah, we just pull the awning out, roll the swag out, and that's us done. No caravan this time. It's very easy. We mentioned that we don't have our caravan. Yeah, we As you can see, we don't have our caravan. Our, um, Brad's brother Aaron lent us his swag, so cheers Aaron. Mm -hmm. and we'll give you a bit of a run through of um, how, we're, how we're camping out of the back of the cruiser a bit later on in the videos. So yeah, let's get cracking. morning from paradise well last night was a bit of fun we uh, went to bed hopped into the swag it was stinking hot so we made sure that we had the swag all unzipped and just the mesh thing down so we're just laying there watching the watching the flashes of lightning the wind kept picking up more and more and next minute it just started like blowing sand into the swag so we had it all open we're like oh no so we had to quickly like get up hop out zip the swag back down properly then we had to like take the um sleeping bag out try and shake all the sand out we were just thinking oh my gosh we're about to get hit by this storm anyway we hopped back into bed but nothing really eventuated well i fell asleep so i don't even know what happened but i don't think much ended up happening it seemed we must have just been like on the edge of it so that turned out good then we woke up this morning still like we'll stand in the mattress so we packed up the swag and that and then as we took out the mattress, this massive huntsman spider was on the mattress and it just started crawling around. <laughs> A huntsman spider was in our swag all night. I tell you what, after going from all the luxuries in the caravan to beach camping in a swag, it's <laughs> really gone back to basics. It's a bit of character building, but I'm loving it. So Brad's just been beach fishing. Any luck yet? Unsuccessfully. <laughs> But that's the beauty about being on Fraser Island. When the tide's up, you've just got nothing to do. You're forced to just relax and chill, which is- Yeah, um, it's good. And we have no reception, yeah. so that's a nice change. But uh, the plan for today is, uh, yeah, just wait for the tide to go back down. So we'll just chill here. And then because it's our bad weather day, the one day this week that it's meant to be a bit overcast and cloudy, we're gonna probably use this day to do a bit of driving, hopefully make it right up to the top. So we'll see how we go. Tackle Nagala Rock, so <laughs> I'm pretty nervous about that. It's a pretty notorious place to get bogged, but I um, I think we've got it, and I think the rain that um, they've had in the last couple of days will have um, 
compacted the sand a little bit, so hopefully it's not too bad. We'll see. Yeah. Now, we are at Middle Rocks, which is about, I don't know, 800 meters from Indian Head. So it looks like the bypass track's pretty narrow. But I, I'd say this one, it looks quite steep, so I'd say this one's gonna have those, um, that timber like frame to help you grip up. But, because it looks like they're going up pretty slow. Update, doesn't look like there's timber tracks. <laughs> They've had like four meter swells here over the last few weeks or the last week um, a lot of the beach has been washed away so I guess that um, on-ramp is a lot more gnarly than what it usually is. Now we're just pulling into Champagne Pools. We might come back here and have a look I think yeah. we'll keep going up to Sandy Cave because it's kind of an ordinary day today. It's meant to be um, better for the rest of the week so we'll do our driving today up to the top. So and okay. look at these places on the way back. Okay, so we've made it um, to the Nagala Rocks Bypass. Um, this is probably one of the most notorious tracks on Fraser Island, known for its soft sand and um, hill climb. I'm not too sure what the condition is, but we're going to walk up and have a look. It's a bit of a, like a weird um, entry and exit here with these um, coffee rocks. The coffee rocks, it looks like coffee grounds and it makes your feet all black. Um, but yeah, we're going to go walk it and uh, see if we can push the cruiser through back up all the way through to Sandy Cape. Worst of it is just here where there's a bit of water running out from um, underneath the surface and it's created this bit of a sloshy bog hole here. Um, it's not too bad, it has got a firm base. So I'm gonna drop my tires probably down to 12 or 14 PSI, crawl through here, jump up and, and send it because the rest of the track isn't too bad. Um, the rest of the track's quite firm. Firm for the Gullah Rocks. <laughs> Um, so, and if all else fails and we can't get up this step up, uh, we'll throw a couple of max tracks down and give it a crack there. But um, I reckon we should be able to crawl through here and 
um, yeah, get over all the way over to Sandy Cape. So let's go and give it a run. I feel like I'm having deja vu of when we were on the Cape about to do the telly track. Here we are again, another hard track to do. And this time we don't even have people to do it with. Nah, but I tell you what, I'm so glad that we did the um, telly track with that group of people and learned so much from them because I was, it's just given us so much more confidence to be able to do stuff like this and see places we wouldn't normally be able to see. I was saying to Brad before when we had a look up there, I said, if we hadn't have done the telly track and learn everything that we did up there, do you think we still would have done Nagala Rocks? And he said, no, no way. We would have gone, had a look at it, and he would have said, that looks too hard. We got to turn back. So uh, yeah, super grateful that we got to do the telly track with that awesome group of people. They taught us so much, and now we do have the confidence to do the more difficult tracks. Looks like we're actually getting a bit of a crowd now. It's annoying. When we got here, there was no one here, and now there are a lot of people to watch. I must admit, it surprised me how easy we cruised through here. I was expecting it to be much worse, and it was one of the tracks that I was most anxious to complete on the whole of the island. A day later, we heard of a few vehicles making a real meal of this bypass, and one even rolling. Being the only route to the top of the island, we were happy to be through. We didn't film the second Nagala bypass, because I didn't even know it existed, but it was arguably worse than the first, although it was shorter, it was much steeper and much more rutted out. Making it all the way to the northernmost point was a real goal of ours, and we love the contrast of the calm bay and rough ocean. What a beautiful spot. We had lunch here with Josh and Laura, who we met while airing down for the Nagala Bypass. We were heading past these dead trees at the top of the island and noticed that we weren't going to make it back through if we went an hour up to the lighthouse and an hour back, as it was dead low tide and there was already water washing up halfway across the track. So we turned around, left Josh and Laura as they had booked a site at the top and headed back to find an ice camp along the beach. We missed out on the sites at the tip as they book out quickly and we weren't booking sites in advance, we were just seeing where we ended up. Not to worry though, as we found a ripper site in zone 8 which we fell in love with over the coming days. But that'll have to wait till next week. We hope you enjoyed our episode 1 of Fraser Island. Stay tuned as there's still plenty to come in the next video, including Indian Head, Champagne Pools, Eli Creek and the West Coast. Thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see you next week.